hop it in. Hello, my name is Kelly Blass and this is my channel, Dynavites International. Today I'm going to be making pumpkin turnovers. A very popular snack or treat in Guam. Um, it is really good. It is a great fall recipe, but in Guam we eat it year round. Um, it's something that I would get in the morning or after school from one of the mom and pop stores. Um, it's really a great treat. It has a nice flaky crust. The fried version is a little bit like a stuffed donut in a way. I know so many people who love, love, love um, pumpkin turnovers. The pumpkin filling is essentially um, the pumpkin is pureed and then um, it's reduced to kind of get any or cook down to get any of the liquid excess liquid out of it and then what I did was I caramelized some sugar and I added the pumpkin to the caramelized sugar and it almost became like this paste it smelled so good making this but it does need to be it does need to get cold before um, making the turnovers so I would suggest making it the night before or early in the morning and then have a few hours in the refrigerator to come down to or to become cool. Oh if you could smell this pumpkin. It smells so good in that caramelized sugar. Oops. I put the pumpkin in a flat saucepan and I will actually cook out any liquid that's in there. Um, we want to make sure that the pumpkin is a paste and it's not watery. And then um, what I do with my filling next is I will caramelize my sugar that I'm gonna put in the filling. So I will caramelize the granulated sugar. pumpkin puree directly to the caramel um, and I will make it's almost like a pumpkin ganache um, so it becomes really thick and it's caramelized and it tastes beautiful and I And I'll be adding a little bit of the pumpkin spice inside the pumpkin um, filling. Okay, so making the pie crust, I included all of my dry ingredients into the flour in a big bowl. Now we wanna make sure that our butter is ice cold. Um, 
And if you have warm hands at any time while you're making this pie crust, if you see your hands start to get really greasy, that means your butter's become too soft. Put it back in the refrigerator. The butter, the dough, the flour, everything can go back in the fridge for 15 to 20 minutes while it cools off and then work it again. Um, don't be afraid to take a break when you're making your pie crust in advance because you're gonna end up with a buttery, flaky crust if you do. Um, the worst thing that you can do is overwork your dough. And, well, sorry, the first worst thing that you could do is um, let your butter come become too soft or too warm. And the second thing is to overwork the dough. So if at any point in time you really start to see your hands get greasy and you feel like you're, and, and you know that you have warm hands, put it back in the refrigerator. Um, the room or the kitchen right now is pretty cold, but I do have a lot of lights on. So at some point I may feel like I need to put this back in the fridge and I'm going to do that because I want a buttery flaky crust. And we're going to put in the butter. Now break up that butter into pieces. What I would also recommend if you have a really warm kitchen or a really warm house because your family prefers to have a warmer house or if you're in the islands and it's just a you just have warm weather um you know turn the ac on in the house or put your flour and your sugar or sorry let me just say your dry mixture in the refrigerator too let that get cold so when you put it in the refrigerator you want to put it in the big bowl that you're going to mix it in and make sure you cover it really well so seal it really well before you put it in the refrigerator so you're not collecting any um any moisture in there. Now, as you can see, um, I have a really kind of mealy um, consistency, but I also have a little bit of chunks of butter in there, which I want because as we work the dough, we're going to see the butter in there and that is really nice. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to add my cold, let me put a little well in the center. Add my cold water. And then I'm just gonna toss it like I'm, you know, tossing in some spices or something. And this is going to spread that water fairly evenly um, or distribute the water evenly throughout the flour. And then we're gonna start to, once we've got that mixed fairly well, tossed fairly well, then we're gonna start to squeeze the dough together. Um, and that's going to incorporate it with the mixture here. Now it's not quite set so I'm going to add more water. So it's about one quarter to a third cup of water um, for and that's ice cold water for this um, dough. Okay so I can see some of it starting to come together here. Now what I'm going to do is though the part that comes together I'm actually going to take that out and put it aside. Um, because what happens is that just means that there are some parts of the dough that just aren't quite hydrating well because, well, um, so what we're going to do, so I learned this trick from Erin, I think her name's Erin Dowell, um, 
I'm always about improving my baking and cooking skills. So I'm always doing research, um, checking out what other chefs are doing and seeing if it makes sense. So I'm testing them out for you guys. And so as you can see, I have a little bit of the sand left. This is, this is where I'm gonna add that extra water. Um, and just to let that come together, and it could just be a splash of water or droplets of water that just kind of get it to stick. Um, let's see, so that was a couple of drops of water. It's come together really well. I'm getting some sticking on my hands from it. So that's perfect. Now I'm gonna add the other pieces of the dough that I took out that have formed nicely and I'm gonna incorporate now everything together. So I'm gonna roll this out in my, on my um, silicon mat. Thin out the edges of the dough so that when the dough is folded in half, you don't have this super thick edge. Um, and it also allows you to design the edge um, without having too much dough there. Fold your dough in half in order to close the turnover and then crimp the edges together. In order to create a design, you'll fold the edge over and then press with your finger in an angle. Remember, if your edges are too thin, they will burn quickly during baking and they will become very bitter. So that's why I fold my edges over in the manner that I did and it creates a nice crust um, and texture for when you're eating your turnover. Okay, 
Okay, so I have made the pumpkin turnover and it turned out so pretty. Look at that. Nice crust on the back. Um, now that is a butter crust right there. Anyway, um, I tried a new technique this time when rolling out the dough and I actually had to refilm um, assembling the uh, turnover because <laughs> I had forgotten to film rolling out the dough to show you how to put it together. But I recently watched um, another chef make dumplings and she rolled out her dough really kind of interestingly. And I thought to myself, I'm gonna try that with my pasta because the way she wrote, rolled it out, um, it creates more layers. Um, and so I thought it's gotta work for the turnovers as well. And it, you almost get a perfect circle when you do it that way. Um, anyway, so it was a really good um, experiment and I'm sharing that with you guys. But yeah, so here is the turnover. I've made, um, this recipe makes 12 or a dozen. And I am going to show you the inside of that. That's the pumpkin there. It's puffed up really nicely. Um, and it's really flaky. You can you can see the layers of, of flake on there. So that's really good. Um, all right, here we go. Mm. The dough or the crust is really flaky and buttery. And this is the next day, so I'll be honest. I made it the night before and I'm filming the second part the next day and it's still really crispy, buttery and flaky. And um, the smell is beautiful. You smell the spices from the pumpkin pie spice mix. And then you have this beautiful crunch from the flakiness of it. You can kind of see it there. And then the pumpkin, I caramelized it, as you saw. I, cam I caramelized the sugar. It's delicious. Um, this level of technique, I mean, this level of the baking is probably, a, you know, you have to have some experience, but it's definitely worth um, trying to get the, you know, it's definitely a recipe worth trying, I should say. Anyway, um, I really hope you enjoy this recipe as much as I do and as much as my family has. And um, don't forget to subscribe, to share, and to like my videos. I really appreciate all the support that I've had um, since I've started my channel and everyone who continues to support me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.